starting from 15, working at all the yes. retail places, working <laughs> at the fast food, working, you know, the corporate job, working, you know, all those positions working up that everyone says, well, when you get the office job, that's the six figure salary, great benefits, great name to the company, you're supposed to be happy because you're successful. And I reached that point and I'm like, I don't feel successful. Mm -hmm. I don't feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And then if I look further and look at the people that are at the top, top, top mm -hmm. of the company I work for that in um, investment banking worlds, like yeah. the managing directors, that's like the top level yeah. or the C executives, um, C-suite executives, uh, making multi-millions of dollars, some of them, I'm like, not Ooh. happy. <laughs> Each one of us has a story. Our journey has and is continuously impacting us. By listening to my guests share how they are discovering their best self, you will discover the best part of you. All right, thank you so much for tuning in to Discover Your Best Self. You guys, I have Carla Bisong with me today. And you know what, she has just been accomplishing all kinds of things within these past eight years. Um, she's opened up her own art gallery here in Houston, Texas, um, in the Historical Art District. And you know, it is really amazing. They have all kind of artists that come in here and you know, she's just been featured in a couple other magazines and newspapers. And so I'm so excited to share with you her story and what made her think of this idea to, you know, just open up her own art gallery. So Carla, please uh, tell us who you are and where you're from and share a little bit about, you know, your the start to the art gallery. Sure. And thank you for having me. So uh, again, my name is Carla Bisong, owner of Bisong Art Gallery, and really excited that I am the only uh, uh, contemporary mm -hmm. gallery owned by an African American woman. And there is a Houston's a diverse city, so yes. to find out that I was the only art gallery owned by a black woman mm -hmm. was kind of surprising. But yeah. I hope there's many more behind me. And I'm very excited to be in this industry. My background was actually finance. So I studied oh, wow. marketing and finance in college mm -hmm. and went into investment banking. Okay. Was working for Merrill Lynch for seven years, okay. working for Goldman Sachs for six years. And I always still had a love and passion for the arts. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't consider myself an artist. Mm -hmm. So I like business. I like marketing. Mm -hmm. So I felt the best place for me to fit in is on the business side and the marketing right. side. Mm -hmm. I find a lot of artists are talented, but may not understand business or might not be people persons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I like people, <laughs> so I felt this is a great way for me to surround myself by art, but not actually being the artist yeah. and being an art dealer. Yeah, I think that that's really cool. So tell me, um, where are you originally from? Mm -hmm. So grew up in Houston, but okay. my family's from Michigan. Okay. So, uh, Midwest Detroit. guys, yes. you know, Midwest <laughs> is the best. Yes. <laughs> I'm from Ohio. Okay. okay, right, right. And we came here in the early 80s. Okay. And so um, I say I'm from Houston because I grew up here. Yeah. But anyone who speaks to me is like, you don't sound like you're from here. <laughs> I think I talk fast. I talk like a northerner. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, well, my family's from up north. Right. But uh, I, I love Houston. It's mm -hmm. a great city. Me too. Yeah. So you growing up in Houston and then you said you went to school, mm -hmm. um, you know, what made you get turned on by art? Yeah. Um, I would say probably middle school, high school. I enjoyed going and visiting um, art fairs, anything artistic. Mm -hmm. My mother, she liked city, yeah, I'm sorry, cityscapes or uh, okay. landscapes, stuff yeah. like that in the house. So we had some reproductions in the house that I always like looking at as sure. a young girl mm -hmm. and just really, really getting excited about art. And I couldn't find anything else that made me excited. So yeah. I knew I had to be involved in the art community one way or another. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. And so when you started thinking or what was the, I guess, beginning process mm -hmm. of, you know, let me open an art gallery. Was it just yeah. something that you were just like, you know, in my free time, let's see what this does. I always knew I wanted to be an art dealer little on the fence about actually having a space because okay. there are art dealers that are consultants and they don't actually have a gallery space. Oh, okay. So I was a little nervous about, well, I mean, how am I going to pull this <laughs> off? But I kept my day job okay. and I knew at the end of the day, art dealing is retail. Okay. And so I've worked in my teenage years retail before, mm -hmm. but the product with an art gallery, it just happens to be art. Yeah. So I felt comfortable while still working mm -hmm. my day job. Mm -hmm. Let me find a space. Let me start. Let me start learning 
running the business. I had amazing artists that helped me along the way. So when I was working my day job, they were helping me run the gallery. I'd come here on my lunch break, meet okay. with art buyers, come in on the weekends. Yeah. I was just ripping and running all <laughs> over the place. And I always knew, well, if I didn't give it a try, I would regret it. So yeah. I'd rather give it a try, mm -hmm. keep my day job, see how it happens. And year after year, I it mean, just got, it, it worked grew. out. It kept growing. Yeah, that, you know, I think that that's something that people, I think, have to think about. It's like, you know, let me see how this grows. Yes. Um, but you said, you know, something that really perked my ears was just like, you know, coming on the weekends, coming, you know, on your lunch break. How did you finesse that while you were working? Because, you know, it can be hard right. trying to pursue to what your passion is while keeping your day job like okay and yeah. you know you have a family right and so you know while you were doing that did you did you already have kids or mm -hmm. you did okay yeah yeah mm -hmm. so um, what was that balance a, like it was tough <laughs> and yeah. I sometimes did it well and mm -hmm. sometimes some things fell to the wayside. Yeah. And so communication, mm -hmm. so communicating with my husband when I needed his help, communicating with friends. I can't always be at everything I want to celebrate yeah. with you. So I can't, I wish I could, but I can't come to every baby shower, every birthday party, every yeah. this. This is yeah. what I'm, you know, doing. Mm -hmm. And I've had supportive people in my family and unfortunately some friends I've lost yeah. along the way. And yeah. I think that's just a part of life as you go through different chapters right you're gonna just have those ebb and flows mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. I think that that's important um, I remember watching a, a Instagram mm -hmm. video just about you know people going to brunch and always saying yes to things yes. and it's just like you know if you ever want to be in a position to mm -hmm. you know pursue what you really want to do then you have to be able to say no right and that was hard yeah that yeah. was that was hard because um, I more so back then than now, I'm a people pleaser. Yeah. So I want you know everyone to be happy. I yeah. want to say yes. I want to help others. But then at the end of the day, I realize long term, what are my goals and what can I do that's staying on that path to reach my goals. Exactly. And so it you know it was just very very important. And I knew the friends and family members who were supposed to be supportive and mm -hmm. be in my life. They're mm -hmm. gonna be there. They're gonna be supportive. Right. But those that couldn't understand the vision or couldn't understand, even if it's not my vision, understand that people have passions and they mm -hmm. have to make sacrifices, then that's, that's okay. They're on their journey, I'm on mine. So um, it, it takes a while to kind of navigate everything. And I didn't do everything perfectly. Right. You just figure it out as you go along. Figure it as you go along. Mm -hmm. So once you got into it, because I really want to know what the process looks sure. like, right? Mm -hmm. Because we always see people on the other side and we're like, right. oh, well, you know, she's doing it, but they don't know that it took right. you. How Years. long How long was it before you could actually get into a space? Yeah. Um, so I knew, let me do my research. So I'm really good on research. I'm really good with understanding what does it look like to get into the space? how much it's going to cost, what can I afford, write out all the numbers, because right. I'm a numbers person. Which was and good. So, yeah, it's good. <laughs> that's, that's good. And I literally was just doing my research, okay, what's the difference between a space in like a shopping center versus if I get a space in the mall, or if I get a house that's kind of in a neighborhood and then turn that into my mm. business. So just doing that, and I actually found this space of all things on Craigslist. Yeah. And I was like, it can't be as nice <laughs> as I think these pictures are because it's Craigslist. Yeah. I misjudged. So you have to be creative and just research because you never know. Yeah. So when I came to look at it, fell in love with it. Yeah. I said this would be a perfect gallery space. I think the tenants here before me might have been a graphic design company. Oh, okay. So they were computers yeah. and cubicles and everything. And I said, oh, no, this needs to be a <laughs> gallery space or it needs to be art because this is an amazing area yeah. and a great space concrete floors yeah. brick walls yeah it's you know, very 20 feet um, ceilings yeah like ah. um what's the word i'm looking for but it's it it fits what you're saying yes. because it has the character it does yeah it does you know what i mean and i, and I like hopefully it feels warm it feels mm -hmm. a little homely so the art that you see here perhaps you can see it in your home mm -hmm. i know it's very popular for a lot of art galleries to be white on white everything's mm -hmm. white to make sure just to display the art which is understandable yeah to not take away from that right but then at the same time it just it works and we're not white walls white floor white ceiling right and we have character we have that texture and the art still it works 
Yeah. yeah. It reminds me of like other more like urban cities. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like a Chicago yeah. Yeah. or so you, you know, New York or something. or something like that. Sure. Philly, um, you know, has that kind of vibe, so I really like it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you talked about, you know, numbers person. Mm-hmm. So what did that look like for you as far as preparing yourself, right. you know, getting into the business aspect? Mm-hmm. Um, how, like, how did you save or what, how did you discipline mm-hmm. yourself, I guess? So it's a two-part question. Sure, I'm asking sure. a lot of questions That's okay. at once. <laughs> so, you know, one, how did you save mm-hmm. while you're preparing? You have your family, you know, right. all those things, but you're like, I really want to get this business. Right. But then also, what did that look like for you to say, okay, this is the timeline within where I need to be able to be to open this? Right. Twofold. So yeah. making sure to, I, and I'm pretty much um, frugal usually anyway yeah. <laughs> even before this business so i'm not the type to just throw a lot of money everywhere so right. i've always been really good with uh living below my means yeah and that's very important and so cutting back a little bit um knowing that i want this goal i want to get a space i want to go forward and then keeping that day job knowing at the end of the day if my first year in business i don't make a dollar mm-hmm. my day job would still cover right. everything right. so that was very helpful and I know I have that privilege to say that and not everyone has that ability mm-hmm. so when you don't have that ability you have to be extremely creative to find ways maybe you might have to start with a partner maybe you might have to get some funding in other areas mm-hmm. um, I knew I had a large learning curve so I did not want to take out any business loans mm-hmm. um, not saying that you that's the right way to go right. but just for me that felt comfortable mm-hmm. I don't want to know, oh my God, I gotta pay this back and mm-hmm. I didn't make anything or I you know, haven't figured this out. Cause this is a relationship business. I know I have to build relationships. Operating in a way where it's, um, people can feel that you need the money. Yes. And that's not a, no. you don't wanna feel like that. Right. Mm-hmm. And I love this and this is my passion. So I didn't want my passion to turn into something I lost sleep over. Mm-hmm. And that was very important to me. Um, because then it wouldn't be my passion anymore. It would right. feel like, you know, <laughs> kind of like the example of people buying their dream home, but they really couldn't afford it, and your dream home just turned into your nightmare. Right. Because you're, right. you know, sweating and not sleeping and like, oh, my God, I'm going to get a foreclosure <laughs> notice. So that was very, very important to me. Um, a supportive spouse, he completely was like, I trust you. I know this is your dream, so you do what you need to do. Mm-hmm. I'd run ideas by him and everything as well, too. But he was just like, this is... I know you got it. You (laughs) let me know if you need my help or anything, but you know, I know you're good. And that was a really good emotional support Mm -hmm. as well too. Mm -hmm. So that, that was great. Um, so living frugally, running the numbers saying, in my opinion, in a year, can I still pay, you know, the rent? Can I pay the utilities? Can I pay this? Can I pay that? And be okay just with what I'm bringing in from my salary job. And that was a yes. So for me, I felt comfortable going on and moving in and one thing great about this business because we're not in a high retail foot traffic area we do have private events so I've had people come in for weddings come in for product launches or book signings Mm -hmm. and then oh wow I didn't know you Mm -hmm. all were here right oh everything here is for sale Mm -hmm. um I want that painting so I've had people come in and purchase something from a private event so we also have that revenue from private events getting that exposure, letting people know we're here, but then actually having some really great events here. Right. How does the marketing look like as mm-hmm. far as, you know, getting the foot traffic since it's not like yeah. in an area where people just kind of be out shopping or whatnot? Yeah. Number one, word of mouth. Okay. So it, it slowly built. I would say no one knew we were here the first mm-hmm. six months yeah. and everything. So it's social media. Um, and it was having a lot of exhibitions, inviting the community, inviting people out, the private events. So one person rents the gallery out yeah. to have an event, but they invited 50 of their friends. So slowly exactly. that momentum builds and builds and builds. Mm-hmm. But number one, it's still word of mouth that's number one. Mm-hmm. Even though we have a social media campaigns, we have those marketing efforts and everything. People really trust when they come in, they see that you're doing a great job, you're providing right. great customer service, and they're like, you know what, I trust you and I want to do business with you. Right, right. I think that that's really important. It seems like it doesn't matter who I interview, mm-hmm. um, that's 
the trend, you know, yes. with business or, you know, how well you do or getting that referral to, you know, a new opportunity mm -hmm. is, you know, word of mouth. And, right. you know, like you said, the service or how someone is like, oh, you should go talk to this person, yeah. you know, and that's truly how things build slowly, but so consistently. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm sure you've hit some hard times where you're like, man, I don't know if this is what I want to do anymore, yeah. or I feel like everyone may have that moment. It doesn't matter if you're a business owner or mm -hmm. working for someone or just okay. going through life. Mm -hmm. And so what has it been for you that's kept you motivated when you're like, you know, no one's called me or I haven't had business or, you know, how do I get something refreshed or to keep going? What, mm -hmm. what motivates you and how do you, um, you know, get back on track to get that traction again. Sure. Um, I would say the biggest turn that I thought, do I really want to keep going with this, was the flood we had with Hurricane Harvey. Oh, yeah. And so, unfortunately, we flooded. Okay. So, I looked at my security cameras and I saw that there was a swimming pool in the yeah. gallery. It was two feet of water. And I just felt depressed for a little yeah. bit. I told my husband, I need to go take a nap. There's a swimming pool in the gallery. You I know. can't even think right now. I know. I I, you you can't. You, you just say... I, I, let me just go lay down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so that was discouraging. And, and then the despair of others around you, too, because that was a citywide, like, it was. What the F? Yeah. You know, we yeah. all were yeah. just like, it was a what lot. in the world? It yeah. was a lot. And, um, and then knowing that happened over a course of a few days, but the, mm -hmm. the course of rebuilding yes. is going to be yeah. weeks and weeks and weeks. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, Again, having a support system to just say, it's fine, let's be. And lucky enough, no artwork was damaged. So yeah, um, we nice. have a loft area upstairs that I keep the artwork, and that's my office. And then behind us, as you see the paintings, they're up probably about a good four feet up yeah, from the floor. Not right, yeah. And the water stopped at two feet. Okay. And so I was like, <laughs> oh, wow, we had about two feet that the water didn't touch the artwork. And so that was kind of like, okay, Carla, you know, the artwork isn't damaged. You really right. just have to fix the floor and some sheetrock. And, you know, it, it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Even though in the moment it did, it <laughs> it did feel that like way. It, it feels yeah. that way. And, um, and then, so that's one fold of, I think that was my biggest moment of like, I'm done. I'm done. I am so done. Um, <laughs> but I wasn't. And then thinking of, thank goodness, I'm one of those type of people that I've been taking care of myself for a very long time and as a young person. So I've had starting from 15, working at all the yes. retail places, working <laughs> at the fast food, working, you know, the corporate job, working, mm -hmm. you know, all those positions working up that everyone says, well, when you get the office job, that's the six figure salary, great benefits, great name to the company, you're supposed to be happy because you're successful. And I reached that point and I'm like, I don't feel successful. Mm -hmm. I don't feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And then if I look further and look at the people that are at the top, top, top mm -hmm. of the company I work for that in um, investment banking world, like yeah. the managing directors, that's like the top level yeah. or the C executives, um, C-suite executives um, making multi-millions of dollars, some of them, I'm like, not Ooh, happy. Do you? <laughs> yeah, right, you don't look happy. So if I'm looking forward as potential like mentors, I don't want to be where you are. Mm -mm. You're doing well, but maybe you, you know, travel the everywhere. The stress on their face. You're having heart attacks. You're not spending time with your family. Mm -hmm. Everyone's getting divorced, you yeah. know, something like that. So yeah, that was another encouragement. Well, Carla, what is your alternative? Right. And there's no alternative that yeah. I felt is makes me happy mm -hmm. or where I would feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And so um, worst case scenario, if something happened that a tornado came, picked the space up, blew it away, <laughs> then I would continue to be an art dealer, but then would take some time and just find another space. Oh, that's so cool. that's how I looked at it. Worst case scenario, I just lost this space, but I would never lose my zeal right. for, for this business. Right, right. And I think that's a good place to be, mm -hmm. especially when other people are you know, listening to us talking you know, being able to say, no matter what, you know, I can get up and do it again. Right. You know, and people know who I am right. and they understand the quality that I give. So they'll follow me, yeah. you know. And so I think it's the same as just like, you know, you said you worked at different places. If you were like one of the best customer service people or sales, right. you know, they're going to follow you to where you've been. Right. Yeah. And so um, what do you, what would you say to, I guess, 
I don't want to say, I do want to say it, younger people. Okay, yeah, <laughs> sure. Who, um, you know, I recently um, was talking to a business owner mm-hmm. and they were just saying how they really do not like hiring millennials. Sorry, yeah. millennials. I'm kind of like on the borderline of that. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, they don't I like it, it because right. they feel like they know everything. Yes. They, you know, they won't listen. Mm-hmm. They, they're not trainable and they don't want to work. They don't have the work ethic, right? Right. And I think a lot of that comes from you know instagram instagram is part of the word is instant (laughs) no that's a good point it is so it's like instant gratification what can i get in 30 seconds 60 seconds you know how come i can't see this now why is this not turning over now Mm -hmm. and what i've learned you know just within my 35 years and meeting other people and um seeing their accomplishments Mm -hmm. it takes time to turn yes. right and to evolve and to become mm-hmm. whatever that is that you see yourself as right so the jobs that you have the experiences that you have would you ever take any of those away no i never would and one thing i want to say as well if i am being very honest and yeah. think of my younger 18 <laughs> 19 20 21 year old self mm-hmm. i was not in the position of feeling fulfilled in my job right so i want to give some credit to because i was there i I think i always had a good work ethic but Mm -hmm. i probably i'm more developed and i'm better today than i was then oh yeah but not to say that i was lazy but i wasn't fulfilled and so you didn't get the best of me at that point and i don't think any of them do yeah but i think the point is like they don't want to even Learn oh, or yeah. have that. Um, there's no tenacious. There's no tenacity. You know what I mean? Got like it. you know, where's yeah. your like? For example, mm-hmm. uh, now in sports, sometimes they have like these participation awards. Oh, got it. <laughs> right. You know, right. and so you don't get one. You didn't win. Right. You didn't win. Yeah. And everyone doesn't have heart. Right. Okay. So I think that building mm-hmm. that character to be able to develop to be. Whatever type of business person you want to be, I think you need that when you're young. I think so. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a that's a really good point. And then, um, to your point, yes, I've seen a lot of millennials, exactly what you're describing. And then I've seen a select few yeah. that just are phenomenal. Oh, yeah. I mean, just like, whoa, mm-hmm. where can I find 10 more of you? Yeah. You know, so I, I think there's always going to be those people who just excel Mm -hmm. and then those that are just like "Eh." yeah 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 for sure for sure (laughs) I mean uh I love that you know you just shared how you know going through all of those Mm -hmm. jobs and different things that you had to do to get to the point where you are now Mm -hmm. really helped set this up yes and so right now like future forward thinking if you could be anywhere doing anything in the next 15 years um what would that look like for you being an art dealer? I would like to have multiple galleries in multiple countries. Yes. So that would yeah. be great. Sure. That I am, be awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I am going to, you know, Central America to check on this gallery. I'm going to Europe to check on this gallery. Yeah. I am going, you know, Switzerland, yeah. everywhere. So mm-hmm. that, that would be amazing to me. Um, I love the business, the part... I think a lot of people that are business owners can kind of say the managing of people sometimes Mm -hmm. is tricky. Yeah. Um, But we all have to keep learning and we have to Mm -hmm. keep developing and understand, especially with different cultures, different ages, different, just what we're talking about. There's just a difference. And if you say, I want to come to an understanding, Mm -hmm. I think you can do that with most reasonable people. Right. And then some people, you know, just aren't a good fit for your organization and that's okay. You wish them well and you know, that's that. But I, I would love to have multiple spaces yeah that yes. sounds amazing i would <laughs> want to go and visit yes yes <laughs> we'll go, go see all of those places yeah. um and then also you know for you each day is a journey mm-hmm. we all are on our own journey and path but what does it feel like for you you know to discover your best self each day yeah um, it feels good. It feels good when I go through an experience that I'm like, oh, last year I would have probably handled it this way. But this year <laughs> I'm grown. I'm a little more improved. I understand this a little more. So it's like, good for you, Carla. Put on the back. You, uh, you handled that well. She's like, you, yeah. they don't know what they I really would have said <laughs> two years ago. <laughs> exactly. And then having more faith in others and excitement on 
coming away from that, um, what do they call it, uh, imposter syndrome. Yeah. And I felt that way sometimes, mm-hmm. especially being in an in industry that there's not too many of us on the art gallery side, mm-hmm. on the dealer side, mm-hmm. many, many artists. And so you sometimes wonder when certain people come in and someone's twice my age and more knowledgeable or more traveled, like, are they going to listen to me when mm-hmm. I discuss um, about this work or this artist? Right. And then I had to remind myself, but wait, I'm the expert on the artists I represent because right. I've sat down and I've talked you to them talk and to I them. listen to them. So they're not going to know what I know. Mm-hmm. And I'm in a teacher position. And if they want to buy, they want to buy or they don't. What's one thing great about art is not too much of convincing anyone of anything. Mm-hmm. They're already just making their decision based on their budget, based on their taste, and based on what they want or what they want to add to their collection. Mm-hmm. I'm just providing the information. Right. So I love that I never feel like a salesperson. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. it's it's nothing that I can say at the end of the day. I love art. I think we all need it. But yeah. still, it's a luxury item. You, it it's is. not food, clothing, shelter. Right. So you are purchasing it because you love it. Because right. you want it. And it because it brings you joy. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't have to convince you of yeah. that. You either kind of get it or you don't. Yeah. yeah. So this is a two-fold question again. Sure. And um, although we're entering this age into all this digital, mm-hmm. you know, whatever i don't know of any art galleries that are virtual okay um but and i don't think that that will be lost but is there any part of you that feels like you know what does that look like moving forward with all this technology and people not going out and you know we're in covid you know what does that feel like and look like to you and how does it make you become like innovative Mm -hmm. And great question because I created and spoke with someone who knows a lot more about technology than I do. Nice. But when we, last year, we had a shutdown. So yeah. in Houston, I think it was like late March. Yeah. And I think it was only a real technical shutdown for non-essential businesses, maybe a month. Yeah. It wasn't it last, too bad. It wasn't yeah. too, too bad here. It, it didn't last long. But um, I, I spoke with someone who showed me how to, or the software was already there. I think I paid a, a subscription fee that I was able to take artwork and put it in a virtual room yeah. and someone could log in and then walk around, go to the left, look at it. And it's great as a substitute. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a great service to have. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, for me, even my own experiences, there's some websites that I can go and look at museums in different countries yeah. and I can do a virtual tour so and it everything. Give you that it's feeling, not though. the same. It's yeah. better than not doing it at all. Yeah. So I think it's a substitute. Mm-hmm. But definitely if anything is preferred you mm-hmm. want to be in person you want to look close and see the texture look at yeah. this picture right here and we're close enough with our visual eye we see the texture mm-hmm. coming off of the canvas There's and this a- is my favorite one yes, y'all I'm glad. I, for those of you all who can't see us if you can see this you're probably on youtube but um the picture is just bold it, the mm-hmm. colors it's an older guy with you know gray hair he's playing the saxophone he has on a blue bright, vibrant suit, and he just embodies, if I was to think of a jazz player at a yes. nightclub, mm-hmm. you know, that's, it looks like him with sunglasses, and yeah. I just, I love it. I'm like, I could hear the music, you, you know. You can hear it coming yeah. off of the uh-huh. canvas. Yeah. And this artist's name is Romeo Robinson, and mm. um, he, great, great painter, and you, you just could not get the intricate details yeah. from a computer. No. Even even if I took a picture of this, a high resolution picture same. of it and send it to you yeah. like, hey, you know, yeah. art collector that we have a good relationship <laughs> with, what do you think about this piece? And you look at it and you get an idea, but it's it's not the same. For sure. Yeah. And then lastly, I thought it was too far, but I didn't get it out. But no, 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 no. <laughs> lastly, um, what would you say to new art collectors, people who want to start and they're like, I don't know where to start, what should I get? Sure. You know, where do I put it? Mm-hmm. You know, what... What do you say to those people who are looking to start doing something like yeah. that? Yeah, I would recommend looking at as much art as possible. So in your community, go to the local galleries, go to the museum, go to the art festivals, anything that places, community centers, nonprofits, there's art everywhere. Yeah. So look at as much art as possible. I can personally say for myself, what I like now mm-hmm. has enhanced or changed a bit. Your from palette. To, yeah, my palette, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So like if someone starts, 
uh, fine dining. Your mm-hmm. palate is going to change over stuff. I've never tried that yeah. before. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> oh, wow, I do like escargot. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You, you just grow and you learn. Mm-hmm. So 15 years ago, I'm now collecting pieces I probably yeah. wouldn't have then. And some of my older pieces, um, like, uh, I, can you I, I sell like it, older like, pieces? Yeah, you can yeah. do whatever okay. you want to do if it's yeah. in your collection. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you definitely can. Um, so I tell people, look at as much art as possible. I know a lot of people don't like to do things alone. Yeah. I would recommend if you feel comfortable, go a few times by yourself to not get those yeah. those external voices from your spouse or your friends. Yeah. Because I really feel art collecting and art loving is a personal journey. Unless yeah. you're married, of course. Like you have to that, share though. the space yeah. and somebody has to look at it too yeah. beside you. <laughs> but I've had a group of girlfriends or a group of guys come in and then somebody says, well, what do you think about that? And I know they're just friends. Yeah. And I'm saying, whatever that person says, it doesn't matter. Yeah. What do you think about that? How and then does that you don't make you feel? Right. Buy it based off of well, oh, what they said. Like, you know, I don't like it. Yeah. You know, you know, and, and it's just, it's just not like going to get a new dress and mm-hmm. you tell your girlfriends, what do you think about this dress? You yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. sometimes they can say, mm, I like you, girl, but that's not the most flattering on your shit. Yeah. That makes sense to yeah. get their opinion because they're not going to lie to you if they care about you. Right. But with art, it's not the same thing. Mm-hmm. Their opinions mm-hmm. do not matter. Yeah. I love that. Good. And also with your business, sometimes mm-hmm. your opinion doesn't matter either. <laughs> it does not. I, I will tell you that. Um, someone could say, do you think that this artist is really accelerating in their career? Mm-hmm. Now, that's an opinion, an expert opinion that I could give based on XYZ criteria, right. you know, how they develop, what they're doing, who's featuring them. Like, yeah, this is mm-hmm. an artist that I can certainly bet on that they're, you know, doing very well. Right. And then uh, some people will tell me about an artist that's like, um, I may not represent them, but mm-hmm. they may say, hey, I kind of am thinking about this, but maybe the artist has created one piece every yeah. six months yeah. they're kind of you know dibbling dabbling yeah like they, they may or they may not be around mm-hmm. in the next couple of years just yeah. you know depending on this or that this and that and if you want to collect many there's no rules on collecting but many art collectors want to follow an artist's career so they want to know if the artist is really serious yeah. or did they just finish doing a band and then like I don't want to do that no more now I'm going to paint now I don't want to do that yeah. no more now I want to yeah. you know whatever 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 yeah so and yeah. no rules on that as well too just I'm going to give my opinion yeah that makes sense well y'all I hope that you really enjoy listening to uh, Carla and I talk you know just hear about you know how she got into this space Um, you know, how she keeps going. And I hope that it inspires you just as much as it inspires me to be able to come here and talk to you and and see, touch and feel, you know, all of the the art here. Mm -hmm. Um, So tell everyone where they can find you and learn more about, you know, the artists that you get to feature. Okay. Uh, Bisong Art Gallery is the name, the website. I think if you just even put in Bisong Art, it'll all pop up. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and um, that's mainly, mainly two, yeah. yeah. yeah Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, uh, and website, of yeah. course. I have upcoming events, so nice. upcoming events that are happening in the gallery, you can check out on the website. Okay. And uh, YouTube, a couple of channels. I plan to do a lot more <laughs> YouTubing. May have had maybe nine videos now, but nice. just to give <laughs> helpful information about yeah. the artists that we show, a little bit about art collecting, but I definitely plan to you know have more helpful information oh, yeah. it shouldn't be intimidating yeah. it really shouldn't be um, but I feel that the industry has become just depending on how different galleries yeah. may run mm-hmm. their business and feel a little standoffish mm-hmm. I love talking about this yeah. I love you know I'm so <laughs> glad you said you wanted to do this because yeah. I enjoy talking about it I feel like at the end of the day I'm still a teacher yeah and then an yeah. art dealer as well too but yeah. um and then the end of the day, that's what we are when we're in our yeah. craft. Yeah, yeah, we are. We are. So, um, yeah, that's it. You can send me an e- I get my email out if you have questions as well. Yeah. Info at besonggallery.com. Send me an email. And uh, you have some questions or just want to uh, know more about it. Sure. I definitely, you know, will respond. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for doing this. And you all, you can see this on Discover Your Best Self. Um, you can find us on YouTube or on any of your podcasts. Um, you know, uh, Apple, uh, iTunes, or Spotify. Great. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Discover Your Best Self. Don't forget to subscribe and comment. Follow us on Instagram at Discover Your Best Self.